And he's even said it in, in certain scenes that I wish I could have a chance to be with her again. I wish that I could just, you know, even if it's not being with her, just be able to talk to her or take out to dinner and tell her how much I'm sorry and this, that, and a third. And let it the fuck go, Lamar. Let it the fuck go. You superstar, you don't do that. Just do what I said. Don't make me have to beg. Uh. Make sure that I am fed. You know this heat is the best. Yeah. Yeah. take back of course I would take him back it was never my intention to um to hurt her but you know my mind my head was just in the right place I wasn't taking care of myself like as soon as you get out uh -huh. I would try to make contact with her I'm gonna try my damnness I mean I would just probably just want to take her to dinner and it would be a blessing just to be in her presence I would just tell her I'm sorry and, and what a fool I was and, and she has the right to never ever want to see me again I wanted to talk who you are about this whole Lamar Odom and Chloe thing, right? And I'm, I'm gonna try to make it real quick, real brief, real, you know, to the point. I watched Big Brother. I'm not sure how many of y'all watch Big Brother. Like, I fucking love Big Brother. I've been watching this shit since I was a little kid, okay? A little ninja, okay? Been watching Big Brother since I was a little kid and absolutely fucking love the game. And the game was all about backstabbing and cheating and lying and, you know, deceit and all of this shit. All of this shit. All of this shit, okay? Absolutely love it. Now, after several years of watching the show, you know, us as fans, we have been begging and begging for people. Uh, well, not people, but begging for CBS to, um, you know, host like a celebrity edition of the show. And so, a couple of years ago, they did create like a US, because they, they had already been like celebrity versions elsewhere, okay? Which is how people started campaigning for Tiffany New York Pilot to get on the show, because, you know, she did like a different version in a different country or whatever so we had been begging for cbs to create like an american u.s version and so finally they did they had a little fake celebrity cast list that came out everybody thought the cast was going to be one way and then ended up being another way and this is how we got to lamar odin being on this goddamn show right as far as the season thus far i feel like lamar is in the best position okay definitely the best position i feel like he's not really like he's a floater he's a floater and especially in a season like this where we're kind of just annoyed and ready for this shit to be over with because we just everybody's an, everybody in that goddamn house is annoying either annoying or dumb okay and so this is the first time where i've ever seen like collectively us as viewers us as bb stands like rooting for a fucking floater you know, somebody who's not really doing shit. And if, if you don't watch the show, a floater is somebody who's not winning any competitions, who's literally just coasting, who's not really doing shit, but taking up a bed in air. And that's what Lamar Odom is doing, okay? But that's not the only thing he's doing, okay? Even though he's not winning a competition, baby, it's clear that he's trying to win back Chloe's heart, okay? And I don't even think it's anything intentional that he's doing because, you know, people have different reasons for why they go on TV shows, especially reality shows, and half the time it's usually because of, like, fame and money and, like, greed and all of these things, right? And so, you know, we always kind of, like, raise a, an eyebrow, like, whenever we see somebody come on a TV show and just try to figure out, okay, what is your angle? Why are you here? What Like, what are you doing, right? And so with Lamar, you know, you have these things that he's been saying um because clearly listen everybody on this goddamn show is here for one reason or another right and it's because it's something about them that either you know we just needed a celebrity to be here okay like like insane boy we ain't heard from him fucking forever okay or like Shayna, we ain't who the fuck is she okay or like you know maybe you just recently went through something or maybe there's something about you that's controversial that's gonna get people talking about it on twitter right like tajrick tajrick hosted you know all of Big Brother cast last season, whatever, at his house. And so then we have Lamar, who's obviously tied to the Kardashian family, okay? The biggest motherfucking family in America, right? So with Lamar being in the house, just naturally being there, they don't have phones, they don't have TVs, you know? So they play cards, they talk, they have conversations, they reflect. And for somebody like Lamar, who has been through so much in his life, 
this is the solitude that he's needed. You know, this is the time where he's able to just relax and like kind of think and reflect and and really just deal with his demons, deal with his trauma. And, you know, it was probably like the first episode where, you know, it came out that he was missing Chloe. And he walked into this house not knowing who the fuck was going to be here, but he hoped that he would see Chloe. And then that's when, you know, obviously the blogs took that ran with it, like, oh my God, Lamar's missing Chloe, and da 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 right? And so, you know, ever since then, you know, for like the last two weeks, Chloe has kind of been like a common theme of Lamar's storyline on the show, you know. He's just kind of been saying what he would do differently and how things would be, you know, so much better now. He's older, he's grown up, he's wiser, and, you know, there was even a point in time where he mentioned something about some, well, let me, let me not say some, like, but he mentioned something about one of his kids that had passed away, probably like 15 years ago. I believe the kid would have probably been like 18 at this point, if not like 16 or 18 or something like that. And, you know, he mentioned how he had been thinking about that and dreaming about that lately. And, you know, for those that don't know, I, very spiritual, whole spiritual channel, Aligning Souls, I see trauma a mile away, okay? I see trauma a mile away. Psychic astrologer, see, I, light worker, all of that. So instantly, I knew where it was going. And I'm like, okay, yeah, Lamar is going through some shit right now. Like, his trauma is coming up. His shadow side is coming up for him to deal with, right? So I'm like, okay, it makes sense. Like, him saying that he misses Chloe. Like, I feel like this is genuine. Like, because, you know, my mind thinks differently than a regular human mind. Which is why I'm even fucking doing this video, right? Because as somebody who specializes in, you know, a special type of therapy and dealing with trauma and um, just aligning your soul to, to its highest good... I can see a different side of Lamar when he speaks. And I even noticed that maybe like a year ago when I saw him do a, a web interview with, with Wendy, I noticed like, okay, this Lamar is different. This Lamar seems humble. He, he seems like he's been through a lot. He seems calmed down. Like he seems very chill. And so he's been speaking about Chloe a lot and a lot of people have been talking about it. And I'm like, okay, no, this is most definitely genuine. Like it feels like somebody who has literally hit rock bottom and it's kind of just reflecting on every fucking decision that they've ever made, everything that they've um, ever been through, every person that they've ever hurt, you know, every time they've been in a position to be the bad guy. And he truly, genuinely dismiss her. And he's even said it in, in certain scenes that, you know, I wish I could have a chance to be with her again. I wish that I could just, you know, even if it's not being with her, just be able to talk to her or take out to dinner and tell her how much I'm sorry and this, that, and a third. And I say all of that to say, Lamar, let it the fuck go. <laughs> let it the fuck go, Lamar. Let it the fuck go. Let it the fuck go. Because I'm on Twitter. I'm watching everybody you know, go up because love is love and oh my God, it's 2022 and the pandemic and this and that and third and deal with your trauma. Here's one thing that we don't really talk about, which is part of the problem. It's like, even from the time that you are born, it's like, if you're a woman, well, if you're a little girl, it's like, okay, yeah, we're going to buy you a cooking set because guess what? We're going to train you to be a wife, right? We're going to train you to be a wife so that you can become desirable to a man and, you know, you can grow up and get a husband and have kids and become da 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 right? If you're a guy, you know, you're going to be a firefighter. You're going to be a cop. You're going to da 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 so you can have power in the world and you can go and find a nice wife and settle down. It's like we have all of these things that we put above self-love, right? Self-growth. Right? Self-transformation. Like, there, there's steps to this shit before jumping into a relationship, having babies, and getting married. Right? But we don't really speak like that as humans, as Americans, as a culture. Like, we don't ever really sit and, and, and preach these things into kids. And so, whenever there's any type of situation where two people are agreeing or one person is confessing their feelings... Everybody starts trauma bonding and, oh, I don't have anything, so I'm going to hope for the best with Lamar. Yay, Lamar and Chloe should be together. What's really the fuck going on? Even though the last fucking year, <laughs> let alone the last six months, we've been bombarded with information about Chloe dealing with Tristan. Okay, and her taking him back every two seconds and him popping up with a new baby. Yeah, we're just going to completely shut that the fuck out 
because Lamar misses Chloe. So, oh my God, Chloe, Lamar, let's get back together and let's make this thing work. Right. And it's like, that is toxic. <laughs> that is fucking toxic. Okay. I love Lamar. Love him, love him, love him, love him down. And when he speaks, I feel him. And there's something about him that I really, really connect to. Because I'm also a person that, obviously, I connect with your soul. But certain people, certain people, I can, like, your eyes are the gateway, the window to your soul. And when I see Lamar, when I look into his eyes, I see his soul. And very pure. A lot of darkness, of course, but there is definitely a light within there. And just even across, even with how he comes across on TV, very humble, very genuine, very nice, very, just everything different than what the blogs may have portrayed him to be, or even a Kardashians, okay, which that is a whole other conversation. So I believe him when he says that he misses Chloe. I believe him when he says that he still loves her. I believe him when he says that he wants to do right by her. But here's where the problem comes into hand. Who's to say that he's over his trauma? It was episode two where he started mentioning his kid that he's not yet over passing away. And that not that that's anything that he could ever be over. Like, let's keep it a buck. Like, you know, a child dying, that's a real thing. That's a loss you're gonna feel forever. But this is somebody who's actively still in that and still going through that and processing that, right? And you can literally see the moments where Lamar is just trying to process his life while everybody else is like mid chatter and this, that, and the third. He's just zoned and spaced out. Why would you tell somebody like that to go back and get in a relationship? Let's talk about it. Why? 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 Why would you say something to somebody who is in that type of state of condition to go get involved with someone else? Especially knowing his drug history and what he's been through. And then you have Chloe. And if you have been living under a rock, then you may not know that Chloe has literally, I mean, well, they're Kardashians, they're Jenner, so they're literally in the news for breathing. But the last year, or ever really since she got with Tristan, she's been in the news consecutively every week, damn near. For being with Tristan Thompson, who is a known cheater, who has had baby after baby. And every single time, for whatever reason, Chloe keeps taking him back, keeps taking him back, keeps taking him back. So you know what that says to me about Chloe and Lamar? It's it says to me that if Lamar is still dealing with his issues of everything in life that he's lost, okay, including Chloe. Everything in life that he's lost, and he's still actively, you know, processing that loss of Chloe, processing that loss of his child. That's abandonment issues. And if Chloe, who is in a situation where this man has disrespected you to the core, had not one but multiple babies on you, you know, and has publicly disrespected you and treated you like shit, but yet you keep taking him back, that says to me about Chloe that she has codependency issues. Exactly. And, and I told her, I say, ma'am. So tell me again why. Are we rooting for somebody who is suffering from abandonment issues to go and pursue someone who's suffering from codependency issues? How is that? I mean, in the simplest of concepts, we were all taught that two wrongs don't make a right. So like, what is that supposed to do? What exactly is that supposed, like, what is that supposed to do for them other than allow them to trauma bond? And then once the bubble, the illusion of reality, okay, comes into play, once Lamar realizes that the fantasy is over and realizes, oh wait, I still have issues and I can't just run to you for happiness, but I have to deal with my own trauma. Once that comes into play, guess what's going to happen? Lamar's going to turn back to drugs. Not wishing that, but data shows. Let's be realistic. So it's like, I, I don't understand it, that whole concept of, oh yeah, let's just, let's just hope and pray for it. No. Hoping and praying for the best is then both get into a place of self-love and then maybe in two to five years we can come back and talk about it. But right now, absolutely not. Absolutely fucking not. 
Not right now. Not you, superstar. Nope. Mm-mm. 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 You know, Lamar and Chloe, I do feel like they would be a cute couple, but once they are healed, once they are healed, right now it's just not time. Deal with your trauma. That's definitely a deeper conversation that we are going to get into on the podcast. Let's start there. Definitely make sure that you're following, you know, whatever the links on screen or in below. Make sure that you are followed and signed up because we are definitely going to be diving deep into the human psyche and doing a lot of unprogramming because it's no longer cute at this point. It's no longer cute at this point. And people don't really realize like how much trauma sells and, and how we all you know, fall in love with these fantasies or these ideas and these illusions and we uphold these fantasies and illusions because we are so afraid of dealing with our real selves, you know? And I just, I just don't understand. Like, why be so afraid of dealing with yourself and dealing with your trauma? Like, what's the consequence? Happiness? <laughs> okay, that you get to let some shit go? You get to cut some people off? Like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand, but I just, yeah, I definitely just think it's bullshit how everybody was rooting for those two to be together. And it's just like, no, y'all are completely missing the point. It's okay to miss someone. It's okay to think about someone, remember them, but you gotta get you right first, you know? Like how the hell are you gonna love somebody else when you don't even love yourself? Or whatever the fuck we'll probably be saying, but it's so true. It's like, if you don't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love somebody else? That's why so many fucking things going wrong in this world. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't even want to take it somewhere else because we could do that with another video, okay? But definitely let me know your thoughts in your comments down below. Like, do you watch the fucking show? How do you feel about Lamar? If you hate the Kardashians, bitch, go, I don't care. I don't care. I feel like y'all need to let that go. Let that go. Kardashians ain't going nowhere. They've been out more than 15 years. They ain't going nowhere, okay? So if you hate them, baby, <laughs> do like Lamar and Chloe and let it go. Okay, definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments, you know, and your opinions down in the comments below. I love each and every one of y'all, okay? Make sure that you are following all of the links that are on screen and now in the description box below. Sign up for the motherfucking Patreon. Make sure that y'all are listening to Let's Start There on the podcast, okay? And let me see, anything else? Stream the music. Stream the music because there are new bops that are coming and baby, you do not want to miss them. It's going to be a cute spring. It's going to be a cute spring in summer. I'll just say that. Bye.